You want to talk mobile web? Let's talk mobile web, shall we? You've probably heard it said that it is a mobile first world. And if you haven't heard it, you just heard it. And that's a very important saying in web development because it means that people are going to view your website on a mobile device as much or a lot more than on a desktop these days. Unless you're in a really unusual industry, which actually I'm in, uh, web videos, I don't get a lot of mobile traffic because people don't want to watch code on their phone. Uh, but unless you're doing something really unusual like that, it's a mobile first world, uh, the way your website looks on a mobile device is very important. So it's said to build, a great advice is to build your website for the mobile web first and then make it look good on desktop. And so we're going to kind of show you some basic ways of how I'll approach some web development, how I'll view the mobile experience in an easy way. Um, and so let's get into it. Here's kind of my to-do list. The first thing is I'm going to build it in the browser. It's really nothing magical or mysterious about it. Let's say I have this web page, which is basically I copied it from startbootstrap.com. It gives you kind of this, I tweaked it a little bit, but it gives you this basic shell of a bootstrap site. Um, and so once again, startbootstrap.com gives you a great way to start. And I'm just going to resize it down and see what it looks like on the mobile experience. I'm going to be using Live Reload. I'm going to set that up up front, uh, not only for when I'm developing the mobile experience, but later on it's going to be very useful when I'm viewing it in devices. You'll get to see that a little later. So I have some videos in the description on how to use Live Reload. You'll want to get that going. It will help you out a lot. It's not too hard to hit refresh here, uh, but later on when we're using multiple devices, it's going to be really helpful to have live reload. So I'm using localhost 8080. I'm using live server in this example. Uh, and so, you know, now I can change instead of rocking new website, let's just hit save rocking website. Uh, let's say this site's going to kill it. This site's going to really kill it. All right, cool, that still fits in a mobile view. Uh, and that kind of gives me an idea of what my website's gonna look like. So that's phase one. Nothing super amazing going on, just resize your browser. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is some device-specific emulating or profiling. Uh, so what I'm gonna do in Chrome, Chrome's my favorite for this, is I'm gonna go Developer Tools, and I'm gonna click on this button right here. And what this button will do is it'll allow me to select a model I can select the iPhone 6. I can toggle from portrait to horizontal. Now, whenever you select a new device, it's a really good idea to reload your browser so the viewport gets updated and see it looks different after a refresh. A lot of people forget to refresh when they change their device. That's a very important thing that you want to do. And then you can reload your dimensions, see what it looks like, portrait and landscape. Um, and another great feature is the network uh, throttling, which allows me to throttle my internet connection down to 3G and see what people are going to get on a 3G connection, or God forbid, the uh, the security-plagued 2G network. So many security holes in the 2G network, which is why the CIA loves using 2G. Uh, that's another topic for another day. Um, so there you go. That's some device-specific profiling. What's it going to look like on an iPad and all that. So that gives you a little bit of a better idea. Once again, it's still pretty easy. We're on our machine. We can do some really rapid development. The next phase, I'm going to start using an actual iOS simulator, which I'm sorry, you can only do on Mac if you're a PC user. Uh, once you get into iOS development, it really helps to drop that chunk of change to get a Mac. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to go to the App Store and we're going to get Xcode if you don't already have it. It is free, uh, but it usually doesn't come on a Mac. Um, so that'll be an install. I get the chance to update, which I should do. That will take forever to install because it's gigabytes of... Uh, the, the application is huge. Once you've installed Xcode, uh, then we're going to go to Applications and you're going to right-click or control-click on Xcode and do Show Package Contents. So we're now in the Xcode package. And we're going to go Contents, Applications, and there's an iOS simulator. And we're just going to drag that out to our dock. So now whenever we want, we can just run the iOS simulator. And this is actually going to boot up iOS on our machine. So there you go. It's, it's huge. I'm, I'm not using my Retina display right now, but if I was, this would not look so huge uh, because the iOS 6 has a Retina display. So if I go to iOS 5, you can see it's a lot smaller there, a lot more manageable. Um, and there we go. And I didn't want to open passbook. No, go away. Ah, hardware, home button. Um, and so there you go. I'm running an iOS. I'm running a iPhone 5. Uh, for this sake, let's run the iPhone 4. 
Do do do. There we go. And now I can go to Safari and I can go to localhost 8080 here. And I can view my website here in actual iOS exactly as it will look. Um, I can also, if I hold the alt key, I can do two finger gestures. So, or the alt option key, so I can do two finger gestures there. And if I'm holding the alt key and I hold the shift key at any point, you'll see they lock in position for like a two finger scroll kind of thing. So you can start, that's kind of how you'll, you'll view your website in an iOS simulator. It's pretty quick. Uh, it's still really nice to keep it on your device. And another great thing is live reload will still work. You can see that's kind of annoying looking. Uh, so I can take a really back off of it, hit save. And Live Reload works on the iOS simulator, which is great. So in mobile view, maybe I don't want the word really in there. It creates an extra line that I don't like. Okay, so that's good. Um, the simulator, for most of the time, really gets the job done. It's pretty accurate as to what it'll look like. Um, but if you want to actually look at it on your device, that's pretty simple. That's going to be the next step forward is I'm going to look at this on some actual devices. Uh, so what I'll do is I will put those devices on the same network that I'm on. I'll go to System Preferences, and I'll go to Network here, and then I will go to Advanced. And I'm going to look at my IP address, which is right here, 192.168.1.7. So that will be on my actual physical device, iPads, I, you know, iPhones, Android devices, whatever I can grab, I'm going to grab them all, 192, and then I'm going to go here. I'll just use the simulator for this part, but this is going to work on my iPhone that's on the network as well, 192.168.1.7 colon 8080. So instead of localhost, I'm going to my IP address, and there you go, that's my actual website as well. And so I can, I will have sometimes five or six devices when I'm fine tuning things. I'll have the iPad up, I'll have my iPhone up, I'll have the Android up all on my desk, um, and they're all up on the website. And so now when I go really gonna really kill it when I hit save all those devices are gonna live reload right there live reload still gonna work um, and then they'll automatically just refresh my web page and I can see it and that's there's there's software and there's a bunch of tools that kinda simulate all this stuff for you they'll simulate your Android and they'll simulate your iPhone but honestly my favorite is is let's do let's do it in the browser maybe pull up an emulator while we're developing this thing let's go as fast as we can and then when it's time to really check it out on devices, just get the actual devices. You know, borrow a friend's Android and, and just actually fine tune it. Have one in the office if you're a company. Um, have like your target, you know, five devices. Say we, our goal as a company is we want this site to look good on these five devices. And these are the ones we officially support. And that's kind of how we'll do that. So there's my thoughts on mobile web. Uh, if you have any just awesome tools that you can't live without, post them on here as well. I would love to see them, and I know a lot of people would love to see them as well. So, hope you're having a great day, and that's my thoughts on mobile development.